and gentlemen, the biscuit. No! We had a free place to rehearse, and um, so we would usually buy a 12-pack of natural light, and we would drink it, and <laughs> we would make stuff up. And the first time we got together, I got there last with the beer, and as a result, I became the bass player. And Grimy came over one night, and we sought his approval, and we got it, and I remember he and Will composed what I believe was the first Biscuit song. It's called Under the Chicken. It was electric, you know, from the minute that band started um, and uh, commenced the best, you know, two of the best years of my life playing with those guys. It was instant chemistry. The Biscuit's name came from the fact that we were kind of over the music business at the time. <laughs> I know exactly where the name came from. There has been much myth and speculation made of this. That in England, people call cookies biscuits. So Tommy Meyer again said, what about the biscuits? And I was like, all right, and okay, we're the biscuits. In the beginning, I know Metallica, strangely enough, was a big, uh, influence. Uh, the songs were written basically, I, I think Beer wrote most of the songs. Kimbro and Tommy Meyer and Grimy's a jokester anyway, so they all wanted to write silly songs when I was finally wanting to write uh, Hallelujah like Leonard Cohen or whatever the hell. You know, the, at, the, at the essence of what we were doing was writing songs for ourselves and making sure that there was humor involved, making sure that we were all just having a great time. The band got signed after playing its second gig. Well, we played the Nashville Entertainment Extravaganza in January of 1993 after having been a band, you know, all of six months or so. They came around, I think they saw us at the extravaganza. They pretty much offered us a deal and then we negotiated. Now this is the best part, we negotiated for like a month. And Al and Dan basically just kind of stepped back and waited to see what happened and offered to put the record out. We recorded most of it at Alex the Great studio, which is still that around the corner in Berry Hill. It was the very first record ever recorded at Alex the Great Recording. We really only had enough money to essentially lay down the rhythm tracks live and then dub vocals and that was it. I think our budget was uh, like $2,000 if. The entire record was recorded for, I think it was $2,000. And really, I just remember we had fun and there wasn't a lot of drama. It felt like we were making rock and roll that sounded like rock and roll, like when we heard it play back, I was happy about how it sounded. Oh, my favorite song on the album? Uh, I think my favorite song may have been 76 Biscuits. I like 76 Biscuits a lot. My favorite song on the record would have to be Blues and Wine. Our live shows, I think, are really what built the reputation of the band. bunch of good songs and we had ridiculous songs but that were super entertaining. Every show was treated as uh, an opportunity to make to do something different. We're all four powerful personalities who say what they mean both verbally and musically. If you came to see us every time it was never going to be the same. It was super energetic and super inclusive of the audience. Uh, my favorite gig? Um... Uh, and my favorite Biscuits gig of all was uh, at 12th and Porter. Um, I think our run at 12th and Porter is my favorite sort of group of gigs. When we performed at Oh Boy at their office, maybe right around the time that our record came out. Early 1994, South by Southwest, we basically were scheduled to play at the Steamboat at 8 o'clock and Johnny Cash had just finished a set uh, playing in front of the Driscoll Hotel and all these people filed out as soon as his set was over into uh, the steamboat. And I looked down and Adrian Ballou is looking right at me. 
and I'm wearing my PJs, which I wore every gig, and we just ripped into the gig and absolutely floored the crowd and ourselves. What am I most proud of? Uh, about the time in the band, the music. To smell the taste of love, can't you feel? This little band that we started for fun actually had one of the biggest draws in town. To me, like, made me very proud. Absolutely the music. We made some unbelievable music. We had such a great time as friends, and we still made a good record. I know that at times I fought a little too aggressively for the whimsical music, but I was proud of that because it was honest. It could blow up at any time. I knew it could blow up at any time and I appreciate it every day and every gig with that band like it's the last time we're ever going to play because it might be. We had a blast, we made a good record, and we stayed friends. And that's the kind of stuff you can actually hold on to for the rest of your life. I am very, very excited that the Biscuits record uh, will finally see its vinyl debut. I'm happy for, for people who are phonograph owners. Yeah, I am so jazzed that the Biscuits record is coming out on vinyl. Vinyl's mainly what I listen to anymore. You can't beat vinyl. I'm super excited about the Biscuits record finally getting released on vinyl because I just like the way music sounds better on vinyl. So we'll be in that crowd now. We'll be in that game, the vinyl record game. The having the biscuits there for a new generation to discover the way they want to discover it via a 12-inch LP is a beautiful thing. Happy 40th anniversary to Oh Boy Records. We love you, John. We love you, Al. We love you, Fiona, Jody, Eileen, everybody there. Pretty amazing that you guys have been rocking this for 40 years. Congrats. I would be celebrating the 40th anniversary of Oh Boy Records whether I'd ever been in the Biscuits or not. We love you Al, John, and I got to know Billy, Dan and Ellen, Tom Lewis. It was a, it was a family for us for a while there. It's nothing but a beautiful memory. Keep it rolling and thanks for putting our record out twice. Happy 40th anniversary Oh Boy and many, many happy returns. You gave me a chance that was Two of the best years of my life. Everybody who's ever worked there that I've ever dealt with, not a bum in the lot. All good people. It was a thrill to be on the label that they can't take away from me. They took my spleen, they took my appendix, but I was on Old Boy Records, and no one can take that away from me. Ever! I'll play a channel till the break of dawn.